What I'm about to tell you amazes me, and it might amaze some of you, too. This is my 36th Rosh Hashanah on the Bima at Wilshire Boulevard Temple. <laughs> Thirty-six. Two times eighteen. <laughs> Double high. Two rabbinic lifetimes. I was 26 years old when the president of the temple and Rabbi Fields offered me the job of assistant rabbi. I had a full head of curly hair a 29-inch waist, <laughs> and I weighed 140 pounds. Now, I am 62. <laughs> many of you know that I have been obsessed with the idea of ethical wills for many, many years. These are documents we create for the people we love to offer them our life lessons and our blessings. A normal will is all about our stuff. Who gets how much of it and when. Believing that the material somehow will express the emotional, that money and things will guide and comfort the people we love. I often say that is like handing our loved ones a picture of food. It will not nurture or sustain or comfort them. A normal will is about the physical things we have earned and collected, but an ethical will, an ethical will is about what we stand for and our blessings and our hopes for the people we love. I have written an ethical will for Betsy and for Aaron and Hannah. They are my family. And now, I have written one for you too. Because all of you are a second family to me. Here goes. Dear Wilshire Boulevard Temple members, my second family, Article One, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching at home, for sticking with us through the vaccines and the masks and the variants. Thank you for caring about your temple and your Judaism when many other congregations were abandoned by their members in favor of online a la carte rent a rabbi Judaism. We have the real thing here, real community, real devotion, real ambition. Thank you. Article two, we are all so lucky to be here to be a part of Wilshire Boulevard Temple. So let's, let's cherish this gift. The Torah asks us to choose life, and what this really means is to choose to be a Jew in ways beyond biology. Yes, anti-Semitism is real in our country. It festers on the far right, and it festers on the extreme left, sometimes 
openly, sometimes cloaked as a kind of perverse twisting of the facts, or neo-Nazism, or neo-fascism, or shallow and fanatical wokeism. Yes, Jew hate is real. But we can fight it back if we call it by its name. And we can make it essentially insignificant by making the most of the blessing that America really is. The combination of Torah and capitalism and freedom that America offers us is unprecedented. It is unprecedented in all of Jewish history. It is a recipe for a Jewish renaissance unlike any the world has ever seen. To be a Jew needs to be more than being just an anti-anti-Semite. Every day we have a choice between embracing or squandering the opportunity America offers us to grow and enrich our Jewish story, our inner spiritual lives, and to change the world around us. Let us not squander what it means to be the luckiest Jews who ever lived. <laughs> Article 3. So much of what it means to be a good person is to show up. A true friend shows up, a true friend helps, a true friend loves us even when we stumble, a true friend sticks up for us when others abandon us. More than half the world's Jews live in Israel and well over half the Jewish babies born every year are born in Israel. Please go, please help, please be a true friend to Israel, always. Article 4. Please do not take the Jewish future for granted. We have an assimilation rate that is staggering. And American Jews are having 1.7 children per couple. Replacement rate is 2.1. We are shrinking. Most synagogues are struggling to survive. Every few days I get an email from some Jewish organization trying to convince me of some particular enemy facing the Jewish people that unless we vanquish, we are finished. Often it is anti-Semitism or intermarriage or assimilation or a lack of diversity or the cost of Jewish life or Israel's policies or, 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 or so many perceived threats to our faith. What I'm about to say might surprise you. But I don't think any of those things are the most lethal threat to American Judaism. The most lethal threat to American Judaism is boredom. Too often when people show up to things Jewish, they are bored by what takes place. We will need more and better leaders on and off the pulpit to carry our people and our story forward. Or Pilates, Peloton, and Netflix will become the true religion of non-Orthodox Jews in America. Where will the next generation of inspiration come from? Article 5. When people ask me what our mission is as a temple, my answer is very simple. We make Jews. 
Our congregation is a Jew-making enterprise for the future. This is where the battle against boredom and fatalism will be won or lost, on the passion and quality of the next generation of leaders. Will they carry Torah in their hearts? Do they have something to say? Do they have that spark and that passion and that talent? Yes, they do. The children coming out of our religious school, our early childhood centers, our elementary schools, and our camps are great. They are great kids. The Torah calls us, and we call ourselves the chosen people. It is one of the most misunderstood ideas in all of Judaism. It does not, as our enemies have often contended, mean that we are chosen for privilege. No, no. We choose to be chosen. We choose v'hafta re'acha kamocha, to love our neighbors as ourselves. We choose to give a damn when someone is suffering, to not look away. We choose to be responsible for Torah and for decency in the world. And that is what it means to be chosen. So let's keep choosing to build schools and camps in order to keep creating these incredible, Incredible Jewish leaders of the future. At one time in Jewish history, there were fewer than 7,000 Jews in the entire world who had not converted to paganism. Only 7,000 believers left. And those 7,000 made all the difference they chose to be Jews. We are a congregation of 10,000. We can make all the difference. All of you choose to be Jews. What we do together matters. You matter. Help us do more any way you can. Article 6. People often quote Maya Angelou to me when she said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I don't think she was right. People do remember what you said. People do remember what you did and what you said you would do, but didn't. And those words and deeds and kept or broken promises are exactly why people feel a certain way about you. Each time one of you has reached out to me, to say you care, to say thank you, to gently help me be a better person. Those small kindnesses and corrections loom very large in my heart. There is no such thing as a small kindness. There is no such thing as a word that does not matter. There is no such thing as a person who does not matter. Thank you for understanding that I am a person, just a person. Every one of us is just a person, wounded, loving, 
Lost and found, happy and sad, petty and generous, blessed and cursed. Every one of us is just a person. Empathy is the only thing we have that will save us and save our families and our marriages and our shul and our city and our nation and our world. Reflection and Article 7. If you are sitting next to someone you truly love tonight, and that someone truly loves you, you are in the presence of greatness. For what is greater than love? When a husband holds his wife or she holds him, not during triumph, but in his or her defeat. When broken in paralyzing pain for the emptying of post-surgical drains, the changing of bandages, the muck of a moral failure and a wash in tears, that holding, that is love. When a parent has faith in a child in his or her most disappointing and foolish moment, that is love. When we reach out to each other, not with cruel judgment, but with mercy and with compassion, that too that is love. Let this always be a sanctuary in the truest meaning of that word. A place of empathy and kindness, civility and respect. A place that unites, not divides. A place of Torah and of love. For Torah and love are God's greatest gifts. And our greatest hope. Years ago, I saw these windows taken apart into thousands tens of thousands of individual pieces. They had no beauty. They had no power then. It was only when they were put back together, each holding its own beautiful place in the mosaic, but also supporting its neighbor to the right and to the left, above and below, only then was true beauty created. Only then did they capture light. With empathy, humility, and love for each other, our Rosh Hashanah prayers will not be in vain. Article 8. The Hebrew word for Jew, Yehudi, comes from the word todah, which means thanks. I often hear it said of someone that they were a wonderful person because they always said thank you to people like waiters and parking valets and store clerks. I actually think that's the easiest part. Thanking strangers for a job well done is easy compared to telling the people closest to us that they matter, that we are grateful to them and proud of them. So I want to thank all of you here tonight and all of you watching at home 
Thank you. Thank you for holding on to your Judaism and the values of the Torah. Thank you for caring about your temple. Thank you for being so good to me and to my family. I was ordained in a class of 70 rabbis, and there are only two of us left in the same congregation where we began. Everyone else has gone on to multiple positions. It is very, very rare for a rabbi to remain in one congregation for an entire career. When my colleagues ask me why I have stayed so long, my answer is always the same, and it is always the truth. It's the people, I say. The hearts and souls of the people I get to work with and the people I get to serve. It is because of you. Article 9, the final article. Betsy and I will celebrate our 37th anniversary in December. I watched her enter the room when we met, and I knew, I just knew we were engaged on our second date. <laughs> you see, I know when I know. <laughs> 36 years ago, I walked into this sanctuary through that door during my interview for the job, and I stood right here and I knew, I just knew. I met leaders and members of the temple, and I knew, I just knew, you, you are the best, the very, very best congregation anywhere. What a gift to have shared two lifetimes with you. What do I know most of all after these 36 years? I am so proud to be four things. I am so Proud to be my mother and my father's son. I am so proud to be Betsy's husband. I am so proud to be Aaron and Hannah's dad. And I am so proud to be your rabbi. We have many more years ahead of us together. And when God willing, many of us are here again after a third lifetime together, triple chai, I know what will be in my heart to tell you because it will be exactly what is most in my heart to tell you right now. And the truest things never change. I will walk carefully onto this bima through that door at the age of 80. And I will tell you then what I most wish to tell you now. I am so proud of you, of us. Here's 
to another 18, to another lifetime together. L'chaim, 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 love, Steve.